Good day, Ark Forest here. Today I will be talking about my favorite musical influences. Why am I talking about this? Because I want to, and because I think it's good for you to know where I got my musical influences from, and also how you can learn to find your own musical influences to shape the sound of your own music. So let me start with the first one off my list is heavy bass music, which is mostly dubstep and drum and bass. And the reason why I listed this one first is because it was the music genre that initially got me into making music in the first place. See, before Arc Forest, I was originally under the name Pivotex, and I wrote mostly dubstep and drum and bass, electronic music. You can find the links down below in the description for my SoundCloud, YouTube, whatever. You can see all the you can see all the cringe anime pictures I used to use a lot back in the day. It's good to see how much I've grown now. But yeah, my favorite artists include the likes of Arcasia, Xcore, Xylent, and there's many others as well. I used to be like really mad into that scene back in the day, but I really never went out because I was like 12 when I started that. I was really young, I couldn't go to clubs, and I was a bit too much of a good boy to, you know, go to bad boy places, but not anymore and so the reason why I initially got into this that way was because one of my close friends showed me a few songs I think it was Arcasia's Satellite Remix Satellite by Ocean Lab he remixed that song he showed me that and he also showed me Pandemonium by Arcasia those are like the songs that got me into dubstep and then through that through like a top 10 dubstep songs list I found X-Core and then later on in life I found Xylent after like listening to a Mr. Suicide Sheep dubstep mix. It was like melodic dubstep or something. It was like the kind of one with just like lush harmonically complex chords and whatnot. It just makes you feel sort of a certain kind of good which is kind of lush, um, more natural rather than the kind of, kind of deep dark down gritty kind of stuff. And I think my musical style was really wild back then, back in the day, and it still influences my sound to this day. And back then I used to craft, like, I, I think they were, I thought they were really good bass lines, wobbles. And, yeah, I was mostly drums and bass folks. And I also included drum and bass in the list because eventually I started getting into that style too because it was fast, aggressive, and I, because it was Island actually, I could, I was inspired to create, like, more custom sort of bass lines that were more than just wobbles and growls. It was sort of more like, kind of like screeching, like as with two plates of metal colliding against each other at a certain pitch. It's, it was, oh, it was so good, man. It was so good. But those days are long gone because, frankly, I didn't see that much of a future with it. And that style died, and so now I have the one I have now. And second music that really influenced my musical style is anime music. I am. I would say I'm probably not as much of a weeaboo as I was back in the day, but I think I think anime still has a bit of an influence to me in some ways, but not as much as it used to. And so a reason the reason I mentioned that was because the aesthetic of it was really something quite different from what you normally see in Western in typical Western media. It's like something very foreign. And because because I'm also part Asian myself it's just something about it that really attracted me. I think it was just like, it appeals to like massive nerds. If you're a nerd, you will know anime, it really appeals to you. Even better if you're an Asian nerd, that means it will appeal to you even more. And it even spreads out to other countries outside of Japan like Korea, China. And Korea, they have their own manhua style, which is slightly different, but unique to themselves. And Chinese have adopted their own style as well. And very, very different and distinct from the Japanese style. And so, yeah, but that style is also in the music as well. The way the Japanese write their anime music is very unique. You don't always hear it in, like, Western music. They have, like, weird chord structures going on, like, Asian pop style. They sort of disregard your traditional key more and sort of go off into, like, weird places, modulating a lot. I'm probably getting a bit nerdy here, but my favorite, I think my consistently favorite Artists from this genre include like Egoist, Fripside, who else? Yeah, it's usually the ones from like the late, I would say, late, no, early 2010s sort of anime that really, really get me. 
Nowadays it's kind of just like modern trap or, I don't know, modern weird electronics and weird rock stuff. I don't know, to me it all sounds kind of the same, but back in the day it really appealed to me. And so, um, yeah, like certain songs like Only My Railgun, Everlasting Geordie Crown. That's that's one of my favorites, Everlasting Geordie Crown. Listen to that. I think it's better than even the first OST. No, the first opening intro song from that series. It's from Guilty Crown. What else is this? Hacking to the Gate, which I found recently after watching Stein's Gate recently. What else is there? There's uh, the intro song of Shiki, the anime. I forgot its name. Yeah, there's so much anime music around that's sort of influenced my style a bit. You can hear it in some of my songs. It sounds like sort of, uh, yeah, it has a style to it. Next on the list is Heavy Metal. And so I've explained in a previous video that I, could, I sort of, I can be very aggressive at times and I'm a man. Having the capacity to be aggressive is a good thing, but you also have to learn how to control it. And so for me, back in the day I couldn't control it as well, but now I think I can. And so, heavy metal. My favorite artists include Slipknot, which is my favorite metal band, Northlane, an Aussie band, which I really liked when they still had Adrian as the vocalist, and Mudvayne, another band that was around in Slipknot's heyday as well. And they have a really good bassist, Ryan Martinet, who was jazz trained, so he was like able to do slap bass a lot. And also like a lot of tapping, a lot of pulling on the strings. A lot of pulling on the on the G string, the D string, easy. <laughs> but yeah, I really like the aggressive style. I like the drum the drumming style of Joey Jordison from Slipknot. Um what else? I like the a lot of the time I just like the scream vocals. I just like the scream vocals, like <laughs> kind of vocals. I probably didn't use good technique there. They have their own technique, their way of doing it. Whereas like you kind of sing uh, ah, kind of something like that. I'm not I'm not very well practiced in it. And I think personally now I think it's an ugly sound, but I've adopted like the drum and bass styles from it. Mostly the drumming and also the guitars as well. It's that aggression is something that really gets to me. It really gets to me. My favorite songs, I would say, include most of Slipknot's Iowa and self-titled albums. Uh, some of Mudvayne's LD50, and some of North Lane's Discoveries album. These are all albums, by the way. And there's like a few other songs as well. I also like the Brazilian metal band Sepultura. Not sure if I pronounced that correctly. And there's another Brazilian band called Expurgo, whose uh, music I've listened to, I think, not really that much, but I just like one particular song by them, Zen on Pieces Swallowed. <laughs> and who else? I might also just mention Zardonic, because he's sort of in the electronic, the dubstep category, but he's like, puts metal into it. Personally, I think like, that's not a sound, I think that's the best sounding, but I think it's a good concept. And so I have my way of sort of, I have my own concepts with sound. So, yeah, everyone does. And I think, yeah, the heavy metal is has been a really big influence on my music because a lot of people say my music can be very aggressive. And also, I do scream in some of my songs. Back when I was like Bad Ark Forest, I used to scream more. And you can probably hear it in some of the older music. I was also a lot more obscene and was also willing to just talk more smack about things that I don't think... Um, the people that I am around with now would really want to listen to and I think I'm glad I write the kind of music I do now rather than the music I wrote in the past but yeah heavy metal still a big influence the next is classical music so one thing you may or may not know about me was I did study music at university and I did major on a certain instrument and so I was exposed to quite a bit of classical music and some of it has influenced my music and that I just merely stole a sort of little motif here and there and just put it into my music, slapped it in and sometimes I even expanded on it. Um, oh, sorry, my tick has come back. My favorite, my favorite composers include, I'm not so much of a Mozart fan, I actually, I actually don't like Mozart that much. I respect Beethoven but personally I can't really get into his style though I think it's better than Mozart. Um, my favorite composers include Wagner and Debussy as well as Ravel. The reason why I like um, Wagner a lot is because <sighs> he has a lot of thematic stuff going on. It's his music tells a really good story. 
tells a really good story and it's got a clear progression while also being complex enough to elicit a lot of emotions in me and that's what I like about the romantic period composers a lot of them knew how to write beautiful aggression really beautiful aggression I think like one example was um, the Freischutz by Karl Maria von Weber von Weber that's how you pronounce it in German I think right Germans criticize me if you want but Karl Maria von Weber that's that's how I say it the Freischutz I learned that in a lecture once <laughs> and it's got a nice horn part where they pretend to be like calling dogs <laughs> it's pretty nice yeah and what else the Debussy, Debussy. So, I did not major in piano, but I have learned piano for many years. You can tell because I'm, I'm Asian, part Asian at least. I look, I look very white for a part Asian. But I learned piano for quite a bit, and often I always came back to Debussy songs. No, Debussy pieces. I always keep saying songs when sometimes I refer to tracks and pieces, but... Debussy piano pieces are some of my favorite piano pieces to play because, one, I like them. Two, I found them sort of easier to learn than more technically complex things like Moonlight Sonata, what else? Most of Litz, Liszt's pieces. <laughs> uh, Chopin. Yeah, I like I like Debussy. And also, like for me, Debussy, they're really good at painting imagery. So like while Wagner is really good at painting storylines, Debussy was, and Ravel I'll also add to this context, they were very good at painting imagery. And so that's probably why they got branded as Impressionism, is because they were good at painting imagery. Didn't really have as much of progression as Wagner's storyline painting did, but I like them both. And that's probably why... I can also give Mahler a shout out, maybe others like Shostakovich, Tchaikovsky. Yeah, they do write pretty good music themselves, but like personally I'm just really into Wagner and Debussy in that, in that field just for those reasons and I think Mahler can be aggressive but there's no storyline to his music really they're just uh, concert no what is it um, symphonies and you know very basic storyline progressions whereas Wagner just comp literally composed a 12-hour opera oh <clears throat> man the, the mic just made a noise sorry about that I won't I won't lean on the desk it the microphone makes noise when I do weird things sometimes so yeah I'll just leave it at that and so that's my classical influences. Next on the list is rap. So see, I got into rap when I was actually in university. The first artist I really got into was XXX Tentacion, or in like Portuguese you would call it XXX Tentacion. <laughs> yeah, but rap, I think like again, I was into the more heavy rap, heavy modern rap. So that includes like XXX Tentacion. Zilakami, Scarlord, Ghostmane, Suicide Boys, uh, who else is there? Cyber, Cyber. I'll, I'll list Cyber as well. He's also written down on. I have a I have a text document written right next to the instance of OBS I have going on, and I've got some artists written down there. So I've got XXX Tentacion, City Morgan, Cyber, but I listed the other ones as well because I really did get into rap a lot back in the day. In fact, some of my art. My old Aquara songs are rap, so I used to write quite a bit of rap back in the day, and it was very obscene. See, what I like about rap is you get and get really good rhythmic flows, a lot of good swagger. It's really good for your rhythm. Rap is really good for your rhythm. That's one thing you will learn from rap is it's good for your rhythm. And the reason why I could get into artists like XXX Tentacion, Zilakami, Scarlord, all those ones, they were aggressive. They were really aggressive. I think, like, to me, the best would have been XXX Tentacion. And the reason why is because of his personality is the be the biggest thing. Personally, I think he's the, uh, the musical artist in the world that I could really relate to the most personally. Probably because he has a lot of similarities to myself, but also a lot of differences, but mostly the similarities that no other artist really seems to have. And... Sucks that he's dead now, but yeah, what I liked about him was he was really, really open and honest about the things he was going through in his life to the point where I almost thought he could have been autistic for a second. And he was really upfront about his music and just showing it to others, just kept working hard, grinding away at it. He just really had the drive to just go do it. 
and he was very open. And who else? City Morgue. Yeah, most of the others I really liked for their aggression as well. And the artistry. A lot of them also... I'll also mention 6 9 as well. He wasn't one of the aggressive ones, but like I like I like his musical style and also his business style as well. He has similarities with XXXTentacion, but because XXXTentacion is from Florida, 6 9 is from New York. I think they have like a different way of going about things. 6 9 I would say especially, is sort of more commercial style, while X was more underground style. Yeah, so that's how they differ in their ways. I also add Ski Master Slum God because and Juice World as well because, uh, well, Ski Master associated with X, but he's also a good rapper in his own right. Juice World, um, as well as association with Ski Mask and X, uh, he had his own really melodic and unique style to rapping, where he was almost singing as well. So I got a lot of influence from rap, and so now I think because of rap, I can I can sing really fast, I can rap really fast. Or at least fast enough for comfort, but it's like fast enough to write music and get over complicated barriers with vocals and stuff like that. And I think also like a lot of rappers these days, they're the more innovative musicians because they really rely on less to create more. And so also I think I respect a lot of them for their business practices as well as their musicianship sometimes. And next on the list is uh, Doof Doof music, so that's like trance, hardcore, hard style, maybe even extra tone, I'll add extra tone in there because uh, I occasionally listen to Diabara. I listen to some of his fast songs or just his really insane extra tone, that's literally what it sounds like, if it's like split a core, speed core, split a core, it's just like the kick really goes that fast and if it's like extra tone the kicks go so fast they literally they will blend together to produce an extra tone thus the name so the kicks will sound like <laughs> kind of like that that's what it actually sounds like but i'll go to like the more common ones like trance hardcore hard style and so this sort of back piggybacks off my dubstep drum and bass interest because it's sort of aggressive enough, but at the same time, it sounded um, like it was more in your face rather than back a bit. So, like, the, what I didn't quite like about a lot of trap music is just, to me, it just sort of sounded a little um, weak in certain ways. Like, trap drums are, to me, they're not as heavy as they can be. And I think a lot of rappers who are really good make them sound heavier than how they actually are. But really, I'm more into like more aggressive drums. So, hardcore hardstyle, I really like the more aggressive sounding ones, but it has to be a certain kind of like full front up in your face, up front full in your face aggression. And also trance as well. It's like it's a little more laid back, but still aggressive enough to get me going, you know? And I could list Dead Mouse as an influence, but he's sort of more into house. But like him as an individual, I kind of respect. But for trance, I'll list some. I'll list uh, Yuzo Koshiro. He's Japanese. He wrote the theme music for uh, the Wanga Midnight Maximum Tune games. My favorite music comes from like the first uh, three versions of the game. Anything after that is not quite so good. And who else? John Askew and Sean Tyus I'll also list. I really like their style of trance. And there are some others as well in their little collective. They call it Seven of trance musicians. I'll also list. Alex Di Stefano as well. I really like his style, but I at the same time feel like a lot of them sort of do copy their own styles a little bit because you can only do so much with trance. It's literally just um, doof doof bass line, melody, harmony kind of stuff. There's like the innovation probably comes from anything except those, I would say. I could be wrong, but then again, you never really know with these extremely niche genres. I'd try not to stick within genres. But also hardcore and hard style. So hardcore is like, well, if you want to differ hardcore from hard style, I think the easiest way is a tempo. Hard style is usually 150. Hardcore is like, I would say around 170 plus. And hardcore, I'd say among my favorite hardcore artists would include DJ Cell. He is an Australian based, he is a Brisbane based musician. So he lives in my city. And also, he is my favorite Australian and Brisbane-based musician. Who else is there? Um, 
Yeah, pretty much Cell, to be honest. Shout out DJ Cell. Hope to meet you someday and not at the gay club. I mentioned that because his last gig, I think, was at the gay club in Brisbane. And, uh, yeah, I wouldn't want to go there, to be honest. And hard style. <laughs> I just realized I could sound like closeted gay stuff, but no. Hard style. I also listened to a bit of hard style back in my dubstep days, and I think I did make, put a bit of hard style in one of my old songs before Arc Forest, and I think not so much favorite artists, but I think just favorite tracks include like. <coughs> pardon me. Uh, Bounce and Break by Somebody Somebody. It was an Atmospheres remix. I forgot who the original artist was, to be honest. And then there's also Sacrifice by Headhunters. And yeah, I just really like Doof Doof a lot. And so now we go to ones which I would say are more indirect influences. So it includes like Cold War musicals. I'll list Cold War musicals because. I would say the musicals that were not written during the Cold War, I would say are not as influential in my style, but the ones written during the Cold War includes like Phantom of the Opera, Miss Saigon, Chess, those ones I would say are more influential in my style. Probably because uh, they were written, well Phantom of the Opera was written by Andrew Lloyd Webber, a British man. Miss Saigon, I don't know who wrote that. Chess was written, was composed by the two dudes from ABBA, Swedish men. And the lyrics were written by Tim Rice, but most importantly, the music was composed by the two ABBA fellas. So those those musicals were written by Europeans, and musically, I would say they differ a lot from Americans. And frankly, I like the European style a lot better. American style is just sort of too commercial without much, I would say, personality in it. They just sort of go with what's popular and what makes money, pretty much, rather than having their own individual style. But yeah, Cold War musicals, they really, really have a bit of an influence on my style because they have good melodic lines, good harmony progressions, good harmony progressions, and a lot of the songs in those musicals just are really well written and they influence me quite a lot. And next I'll say is, uh, why did I write this? Black Disco. And really the only artist I will list here is Boney M. Again, starting from the previous example, a lot of what I'm going to list now will be influences from my parents, because this is the music they listen to. Yeah, do you expect me to listen to music that was written before my time too much? Probably not. So Black Disco, Boney M. I listened to a lot of Boney M back in the day. And mostly it was just like two compilation CDs. It was like gold and more gold those are literally the two discs i mostly listen to but the music from those two discs i think influenced a lot of my sound style unconsciously subconsciously and i recently listened i recently listened to some of it again and i realized hey this kind of slaps and the reason why i don't say abba who was probably more popular than them is probably because the boney m sort of had their own sort of grittier way of writing the music and they I would sort of go out of the way, I like them because they sound more black. And, I don't know, it's, there's something about their style that just appeals to me more than ABBA. It just, it just sounds more, to me, kind of... You would say real, or it would be like, sort of more... <clears throat> aggressive. And less fluffy. But, yeah. And also, the way they did those compilation albums, now, because of them, that's the reason why I always have the concept of a perfect album of music as always being 20 songs with an A-side and a B-side. And it's because I listened to those two Boney M discs back in the day. Um, and there were probably some other musicians I would also have considered influences, including like The Carpenters, Ella Fitzgerald, Cole Porter. But like, they're very fringe, I would say. And next is video game music. So. I used to play a lot of video games through my childhood, but I think like the most influential music comes from racing games, to be honest, because um, racing games tend to get pretty aggressive, and I like aggressive music. So I'll list Yuzo Koshiro again. His trance music is just really good, and then also list 
Need for Speed Underground 2. I really got into so much music from that game back in the day. I probably don't listen to it that much anymore, but, anymore, but I still remember the songs. And they really get me going when I hear them again. It includes uh, Switch Twitch by Fluke from their album Puppy. Um, Celebration Song by Unwritten Law. Who else? Um, Rocket Ride by Felix de House Cow. I think it's a Soul Wax remix. Yeah, literally that whole that whole soundtrack is uh, so good for me. And yeah, and then early 2010s electro. See, one thing about your musical taste, they're often created, I think, during your formative years. And so, at a certain period of time, certain songs, whether you like them or not, will be the most nostalgic to you. For me, that is music from the early 2010s. That includes songs like. Uh, a lot of LMFAO music, Party Rock Anthem, everyone knows that. Uh, Too Sexy and I Know It. No. The song is called Sexy and I Know It, but the line from the song is called I'm Sexy and I Know It. Actually, I got it wrong the first time. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, so it includes like LMFAO, uh, Born This Way by Lady Gaga. I like the way the song sounds, but I do not agree with the message of that song, and so it's not really one I particularly respect. Uh, some Justin Bieber. <laughs> I'd say he's a lot better artist now than he was back in the day. It was uh, too commercially pushed and kind of... Uh, yeah, there was some problems with him back in the day. He's a lot better now. He's Christian now as well, I might add. Um, what else? Uh, I don't know, Katy Perry Fireworks? Uh, Chris Brown, yeah. <laughs> oh man, these are these are so many different songs. So I should probably close the door, or maybe not. Screw that. And then I think the last one I'll list is a very recent one, Brazilian Funk. And I only just recently started getting into it, so really all I know is like, uh, Anita Vai Malandra. And it's like the kind of And I think that sort of introduces me to a sort of more exotic style that's a little bit new from what I'm already used to. And so I think that's sort of me going out of my way to explore newer styles, to appreciate more music, and just to really expand my horizons a bit more. And I think just for like extra shout outs, extra additions to the list I've already created, I might just add like um, Chinese Guozhong music or just Chinese Guozhong playing. I think just certain instruments and instrumental styles I think I like to use in my music. I like certain motifs. Yeah. Not really too much to add there. <laughs> yeah, and that's about it. So these are all the different musical influences that I have had throughout my life. There's probably more as well that I might have gotten, but these are the big main ones that I've had which have shaped the sound of my music over the years. And you can probably see the evolution of it over the course of, I don't know how long, but yeah. Those are my musical influences. And so if you want to have like a lot of musical influences or you know your own, or you want to explore your own, then I would say like revisit your memories or just listen to what you really like to listen to rather than what you sort of force to listen to most of the time. You know, the stuff that really gets you going. And maybe even go out of your way to explore new music because Frankly, I think to appreciate new music is also a good way to, or appreciate other people's music is a good way to sort of be able to write your own music. And if you're worried about plagiarism, I don't think there's a good chance you'll plagiarize someone else's song. They probably won't care too much pardon me, about it. And what else? Musical influences. I think it just sort of helps you get out of your own head for a bit. So it's really good. It's really good. And if you enjoyed today's video, I ask that you hit the subscribe button. I ask that you hit the bell icon for more notifications. I also ask that if you want to buy my music on arcforest.net, go to arcforest.net. <laughs> and if you want to buy my merch, go to arcforestmerch.com. And with that said, I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>